The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a shortage of personal protective equipment, PPE, pressing clinicians to perform procedures on infected patients without the recommended protective gear. As we grapple with supply problems, a Taiwanese anesthesiologist recently shared the design of a reusable protective device to reduce droplet and aerosol exposure during airway management. This aerosol box is a plastic transparent cube designed to cover a patient's head with two orifices to insert the hands while performing a procedure. We took an aerosol box prototype to our simulation center to examine its protective qualities. To simulate a cough and evaluate the spread of droplets and aerosols, we used a small latex balloon filled with 10 cc of fluorescent dye placed in a mannequin's hypopharynx. The dye contains small particles invisible to ordinary light and clings to any type of surface. The balloon was inflated with oxygen through tubing inside the mannequin until it exploded, simulating a forceful cough. A laryngoscopist covered with a gown, surgical mask with eye shield, and surgical hat stood at the head of the mannequin with his hands inside the box. We repeated the experiment without and with the box and then illuminated the scene with ultraviolet light to visualize the spread of the dye. The simulated cough expelled the fluorescent dye through the mannequin's mouth. The laryngoscopist, who was positioned above the mannequin's head, was contaminated on his face mask, eye shield, neck, ears, and arms. There was contamination of the room floor several feet away from the head of the bed and on a monitor located over six feet away from the mannequin. After the experiment without the box, the room was cleaned, the PPE replaced, and the experiment repeated with the box position over the mannequin's head. The simulated cough resulted only in contamination of the inner surface of the box and the laryngoscopy's hands and forearms. Ultraviolet light examination of the laryngoscopist and the room showed no contamination outside of the box. Our southern cough model during airway management underscores the infection transmission risk when caring for patients with COVID-19. A single cough can contaminate a significant portion of the PPE, the clinician's neck, ears, hair, the floor, and surrounding equipment. Patients can cough during intubation and extubation. It is estimated that with a flow rate of up to 7 to 8 liters per second, a cough can spread a large number of droplets with size varying from 0.1 to 10 micrometers. Our simulation falls within this spectrum and produced many droplets of varying size. Considering the spread of contaminants from a single cough, every measure should be taken to contain droplets and protect healthcare providers, including using a head cover or hood. Although the aerosol box does not eliminate the risk of exposure, it reduces the risk of transmission during airway management. Our simulation method, though pragmatic, is not validated for the projectile direction, speed, or turbulence of a true cough nor to match the particle size distribution. Droplets are overproduced compared to aerosols. Our method of detection cannot identify very small quantities of materials that could be infectious. Nevertheless, we suggest that the ad hoc barrier enclosure provided a modicum of additional protection and could be considered as an adjunct to standard PPE. As a caveat, we found that the box restricted hand movement and required training before using patients. Operators should be ready to abandon use of the box should airway management prove difficult.